Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. Okay, welcome to lesson 23, Base Angles of Isosceles Triangles. Classwork opening exercise says, describe the additional piece of information needed for each pair of triangles to satisfy the SAS triangle congruence criteria. We are given that AB equals DC. So that is where we're going to begin. So let me choose green because I, I already drew these two um, triangles. So let me explain something here. If we move this down here and we move that down there, those are the two triangles we're trying to prove are congruent. They overlap up here. So what we would need, we already know that this side is congruent to this side. AB is congruent to DC. So you always label your diagram. So there you have it. That's the given. And it's asking what additional information do we need to prove these triangles are congruent? Well, we need to know that this angle down here is equal to this angle down here. And we would have to know that they're right angles. So one piece of information we would need to know is that AB is perpendicular to BC. That would form this right angle. And in that, if that's the case, then we'd also have to know that DC is perpendicular to BC. That would form these two right angles. Now I have a side and an angle. And since these are B, this is BC right here, this is BC and this is BC, they're equal to each other because they're shared. So that's a reflexive property. So we, that we already know that's a side. So the only thing we need is these angles. So you would either have to be told that AB is perp perpendicular to BC as well as DC perpendicular to BC, or we'd have to be told that angle ABC equals angle DCB. So those are the three, one of the three, these are what we would need to get SAS because we have the reflexive property saying BC is equal to itself. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so on part B, it says AB equals RS. So AB is and I'm not, going to, I'm not going to drag these out this time. I'm just going to highlight the givens. AB is here. And it is equal to RS. I'll do it color coded this way. So again, we're going to mark those as congruent. So that's a side. We're told that AB is parallel to RS. Okay, so since they're parallel, I want to label that like so. Either use... Uh, an arrow like this or just an just the V shaped arrow. All right, so that's those two things that are marked given. So what do we what would we need to know besides that? Well, that is a side parallel to another side. So if CS is a transversal, all right, so if CS is a transversal, then we would know that angle ABC is congruent to angle RSB or RST or RSC, whatever you want to call it. So that's why they're telling us they're parallel. We have a transversal and corresponding angles are congruent. So we have a side, we have this angle because of the transversal. So we would need to know that CB, let's see, CB, is congruent to TS. Try not to overlap those too much so you can't see them. I would need those two sides, CB congruent to TS. Okay, so let's write that. We would need to know CB equals TS or CT, this small piece, equals BS, this small piece, because TB is equal to itself, and then we could use the summation formula. CT plus TB equals BS plus TB because TB is equal to itself, they're shared. So if CT equals BS, then CB has to be equal to TS. Hopefully that's not confusing to you. 
Okay, so anyway, moving on to the exploratory challenge. Today we examine a geometry fact that we already ex accept to be true. We're going to prove this known fact in two ways. One, using transformations, and two, by using side angle side, triangle congruence criteria. Here is isosceles triangle ABC. It's isosceles, we're told this side's congruent to that side. We accept that an isosceles triangle, which has at least two congruent sides, also has congruent base angles. So the base angles that are congruent here are B's congruent to C. If this side equals this side, the angle opposite has to be congruent to the angle opposite the other congruent side. Here is isosceles triangle. Okay, so we just said that, yes? Here is isosceles triangle ABC, we accept it. Yes, label the congruent angles in the figure, which I have done. Now we prove that the base angles of an isosceles triangle are always congruent. Okay, page two brings us to the proof. We wanna prove base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent because we are given that two sides are congruent. How do we prove the base angles are congruent? Okay, it's a really simple theorem or proof. It says prove base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent transformations. So we're given isosceles triangle ABC. So we're told this whole triangle, the big one, is isosceles. And we were told that side AB is congruent to AC, right there. AB equals AC. Prove the measure of angle B equals the measure of angle C. So we're trying to prove that this is congruent to this. So construction, draw the angle bisector with a, they call it a ray AD, it's a segment. It doesn't go on forever. So that's just a segment AD of angle A. So draw an angle bisector. So from A down to D, cuts angle A in half, therefore each half is equal. If this was 40 degrees and you cut it in half, it'd be 20 and 20. Where D is the intersection of the bisector BC. Okay, so if you bisect angle A, you're also cutting BC in half. So BD is congruent to DC. We need to show the rigid motions max points B to point C and point C to point B. So you let R be the reflection through AD. Through the reflection, we want to demonstrate two pieces of information that map B onto point C and vice versa. One, AB maps to AC. So AB, side AB maps to AC. And two, AB is equal to AC. Since A is on the line of reflection, AD, the reflection of A is itself, it's not moving. It's reflection, it's on the line of reflection, so it's still, it's, re, it's um, transformation is itself, is what that says. Reflections preserve angle measures, so the measure of the reflected angle R, angle BAD, this angle, reflected over would be equal to this angle because of reflections preserve angle measure, okay? So that we know is equal to angle CAD. Therefore, re reflection of AB equals AC. Angles preserved and length of the sides preserved. Reflections also preserve lengths of segments. There it is. Therefore, the reflection of AB still has the same length as AB. I, the, by hypothesis, AB equals AC. So the length of the reflection is also equal to AC, okay? So AB's length is gonna equal the reflection that is length AC, okay? They're then reflecting B equals C. Using similar reasoning, we can show that the reflection of C would be B. Reflections map rays to rays, so the Reflection of ray BA equals ray CA, and the reflection of BC would be CB. Again, since reflections preserve angle measures, the measures of uh, uh, reflection of angle ABC is equal to the reflection of the measure of angle ACB. Okay, again, they're calling these rays, they're really segments, but anyhow. We conclude that the measure of angle B equals the measure of angle C. 
Equivalently, we can state that angle B is congruent to angle C. In proofs, we can state that base angles of an isosceles triangle are equal in measure, or that base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent. Okay, so now it says prove base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent, SAS. Given isosceles triangle ABC, so it's the whole triangle, draw an angle bisector AD of angle A, so we cut angle A in half, where D is the intersection of the bisector. Okay, so AD bisects BC at D. We're going to use this auxiliary line towards our SAS criteria. Okay. Okay, so hopefully you had a chance to try this on your own. So here we go. Given isosceles triangle ABC with AB congruent to AC, right there, the given, we want to prove angle B is congruent to angle C. Okay, so I like to draw a table. So let me do that. We have our statement in our conclusion table. Okay, just to save time, I'll just put S statement and reason. Okay, so the first thing we do is list our givens. AB equals AC reason given. AB equals AC. Then we have our angle bisector here, AD. So the length of AD is going to equal the length of AD, and that's the reflexive property. Okay, so let's label that. It's congruent to itself. So now we have side and side. All right, so now we have the measure of angle BAD. equals the measure of angle BAD equals CAD, okay? Equals the measure of angle CAD, okay? Because this is a bisector, so the angles um, are congruent. So that's just definition of angle bisector. So you just say definition of angle bisector, okay? So now I have those angles are congruent. And since it's marked, I'll just mark it in red just so that it stands out. That's that angle congruent to that. So we have a side, we have an angle, we have a side, we have a side, we have an angle, we have a side. So now we can say a triangle ABD, triangle ABD, here, let me do it in black, triangle A, B, D, equals triangle, actually I don't want to say equals, they're congruent. Triangle A, B, D is congruent to triangle A, C, D. By S, A, S. Side, angle, side, side, angle, side. Capiche? Okay, so what are we trying to prove? Angle B is congruent to angle C. Okay, so now we can just say that. Angle B is congruent to angle, I forgot my angle symbol. Okay, angle C. All right, so this is corresponding angles of congruent triangles are congruent. I just use this acronym, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. You could say corresponding angles of congruent triangles are congruent. But um, anytime I ever taught this course, I always just say CPCTC and the students learn what that stands for. Okay, page three brings us to exercises where we have to practice our proof writing. So remember the first thing I always do is recopy the, the givens. So JK equals JL given while you're putting that in your table. Label your diagram. JR bisects KL. 
Okay, I don't need to put that in here because we already see that up there. Um, but I know angle K is congruent to angle L because this is an isosceles triangle. Opposite sides are congruent, therefore opposite angles are congruent. So I would say angle K equals angle L. All right, it looks like angle, angle, angle L. Angle K equals angle L. And you can just say base angles of isosceles triangles are congruent. Okay. So now we can say because JR is a bisector of angle J, it's also a bisector of KL. So now I can say KR equals LR. And that's the definition of a segment bisector. Okay, so now I have this equal to this. So I have a side, I have an angle, I have a side, I have a side, I have an angle, I have a side. So now I can say, and remember three dots looking like this is the word therefore triangle JKR is congruent to triangle JLR. Reason, side, angle, side. Okay, so we proved the two triangles are congruent, but what are we trying to prove is, well, what we're trying to prove is JR, JR is perpendicular to KL. Okay, so we know angle JRK is congruent to angle JRL. Okay, so that's the first thing we're going to say here. Let me change colors now. JRK, angle JRK equals angle JRL. Okay, so what I'm really saying here is that this angle is congruent to this angle. Okay, we already know the two triangles are congruent. So by corresponding parts congruent triangles, since triangles are congruent, all their parts are. So that's C, P, C, T, C. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, so now I can say the measure of angle um, J, R, K plus the measure of angle J, R, L equals 180 degrees. Okay, that's just definition of a linear pair. Okay, linear pairs form supplementary angles, whatever you want to say. Linear pairs form supplementary angles. I'm just going to abbreviate there. So I know those two angles add up to 180 degrees. Okay, I don't know they're congruent yet. I should not have marked that. I was just saying, naming the angles. I wasn't saying they're congruent yet. So we also know that two of JRK, two of angle JRK will equal 180. because JRK equals JRL. Now I can say instead of JRK plus JRL, I'm saying JRK plus JRK, which is two JRK equal 180. That's substitution. And I've run out of room, so just let me pause this a second and I'll fix this. Okay, so we're almost there. So if two of, if I divide both sides by two, then I will get angle J R K equals, divide this by two, 90 degrees. And that's just the division property of equality. We'll divide both sides by two.
Okay. All right, so now I know JRK is 90 degrees. Now I can say, therefore, we have just proved JR is perpendicular to KL. And the reason, definition of perpendicular lines. Okay. Okay, exercise two, here we go. Let's use blue for exercise two. All right, given AB equals AC. AB equals AC given. AB equals AC, okay. XB equals XC given. given, okay? We're trying to prove AX, AX bisects angle B, A, C. So we wanna prove that this is cutting these two, this triangle in half to this point, if you will. All right, so I can now say the measure of angle ABC, which is right here, is congruent to the measure of angle ACB, because if you look at the whole triangle, it's an isosceles triangle. Side AB is opposite angle C, side AC is opposite angle B. So now I can say angle ABC, the measure, now let's stay with blue. Measure the measure of angle ABC equals the measure of angle A, C, B. And that's because base angles of isosceles triangles are congruent. Okay. Okay, misspelled isosceles, had to fix that. Okay, all right, so now we have AB is equal to AC, angle ABC is congruent to angle ACB. All right, so we have one side, we have one angle, and now we can say what? The measure of angle ABC, now we're gonna split this thing up. The measure of angle ABC equals the measure of angle ABX plus the measure of angle XBC. Let me just fix this a little bit. Oops, don't want to explode that, that's for sure. Okay, there we go. A little bit more room here. So A, B, blah, blah, blah. The measure of A, B, C equals the measure of A, B, X plus the measure of angle X, B, C. And we can say the measure of angle A, C, B at the same time, the measure of angle A, C, B equals angle A, C, X. Actually, I should say the measure of angle A, C, X. plus the measure of angle XCB. And the reason, angle addition postulate. So basically what it's saying is the parts add up to the whole or the sum. So let me just check, make sure I've got everything here. So angle ABC equals ABX plus XBC. Angle ACB equals AXC equals ACX plus XCB. Okay. Um, ABX, XBC 
XCB. Okay. And is there anything else we can say? A measure of angle ABX. Okay, so from that, we can say the measure of angle ABX, this here, equals the whole thing, the measure of angle ABC, minus, so we're saying ABX equals ABC minus the measure of angle XBC. Okay. The measure of angle, let's see, what are we going to do next? So what have we done? Angle ABC equals ABX plus XBC. Angle ACB equals ACX plus XCB. Then I said the measure of angle ABX equals the measure of angle ABC minus XBC. Okay, and then I can say ACX, the measure of angle ACX equals the measure of angle ABC or ACB minus the measure of angle XCB. Okay, subtraction property of equality. All right, so what can we get from that? Well, let's change colors now. The measure of angle ABX equals the measure of angle ACX. Notice ABX equals angle ABC minus XBC. Measure of angle ACX equals the measure of angle ACB minus XCB. So I can say they're equal. So why? ABX equals ABC minus XBC. think this through a moment. Okay, this is all based off of these angles being congruent. ABC is congruent to ACB. So ABC is congruent to ACB, and then we're subtracting pieces that are congruent, so therefore we can substitute in. So this is substitution. Okay, sometimes we need to put a little bit of thought into these. It can be a little tricky. All right, so then after we do that, we can now say, what do we have? We have AB congruent to AC. We have BX congruent to CX, or XB congruent to XC. Doesn't matter which order you say that. And now we have the measure of angle ABX, which is this portion here, is equal to ACX, which is this one here. So now I can say triangle ABX. Therefore, triangle A. B, X is congruent to triangle A, C, X. And that's by side angle side. So we're almost done. Final stages here. Now we can say angle B, A, X. equals angle C, A, X. So if these two triangles are congruent, then now I can say this angle is congruent to this angle because of corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent or corresponding angles of congruent triangles are congruent, either way you wanna say that. All right, so now I can come to my conclusion. A, X, side A, X, bisects. 
angle B, A, C. Okay, so if these two angles are congruent, then they're, they've been bisected. That's definition of angle bisector. And we are done. Okay, moving on to exercise three. Again, first thing we do is the givens. Jx equals Jy. And the reason is given, label the diagram. Jx equals Jy. All right, before I go any further though, well, no, I can do all the givens first. Kx equals Ly. So Kx equals Ly, given. All right, now I can say the measure of angle one is congruent to the measure of angle two. So I'm saying this equals this. This is an isosceles triangle. This is definition, or I should say not definition, base angles of isosceles triangles are congruent. Okay. Measure of angle one plus the measure of angle three equals 180. Okay, uh, linear pairs are supplementary. Okay, we can do the same with two and four. The measure of angle two plus the measure of angle four equals 180. Same reason. Okay. All right, so then we can say the measure of angle three equals 180 degrees minus the measure of angle one. I'm just subtracting the measure of angle one over to the other side and solving for the measure of angle three. I'll do the same with four. The measure of angle four equals 180 degrees minus the measure of angle two. So I just subtracted this over to this side. So the measure of angle four equals this. Well, I know the measure of angle one and angle two are congruent from this step. So 180 minus one and 180 minus two is gonna give us the same values. So that's going to conclude that the measure of angle three equals the measure of angle four. So the reason for these was just subtraction property of equality. A lot of writing. And that's for this step as well. Ditto. Measure of angle three equals measure of angle four substitution. Okay, this might be a little hard to see, but angle one equals angle two. So if angle one and angle two are equal, let's say they're 50 degrees, this would be 180 minus 50. This would be 180 minus 50 or 130 and 130. So therefore these two are equal because we're subtracting equivalent values from 180 on both equations. So this is substitution. Property of equality. So I'll just do this. Okay, three is equal to four. So now I have angle three congruent to angle four. Therefore, I can say J triangle J X K is congruent to J Y L because we have a side, an angle, and a side. So 
So I said J X K, I say J Y L. S A S. All right, so now I can say J K is congruent to J L. Corresponding sides or corresponding parts of congruent triangles are, whoops, congruent. CP, CTC. Okay, since the triangles are congruent, then it's their corresponding sides have to be congruent. So JK is congruent to JL. All right, so now we just have proven that JKL is an isosceles triangle because it has two pairs of uh, congruent sides. So therefore, triangle JKL is isosceles. And by the definition of isosceles triangles. And we're done. Okay, this one's going to be a little different, number four. Um, it says given triangle ABC with the measure angle CBA equal to the measure angle BCA and it's labeled in the diagram. So now we have two base angles are congruent. All right, so this is the converse of base angles of isosceles triangles. So before we wanna prove BA is congruent to CA. Before we were given the sides were congruent, we had to prove the angles were. Now we're given the angles are, and we wanna prove that opposite sides are. So we're gonna use a transformation. So the first thing I'm going to do is say this. Proof. We can prove that AB equals AC by using rigid motions. Construct the perpendicular bisector L to BC. So to construct a bisector, remember you have to draw a circle with a certain diameter and then another circle and where those two circles intersect, then it's going to draw perpendiculars. I'm just going to save time here because we've done that in prior lessons and I am just going to draw the bisector freestyle, if you will. I'll put my point at A and down just like that. Electronics. The program allows me to do this. So there we have it. So perpendicular bisector L to BC. So if it's perpendicular, this is 90 degrees and that's 90 degrees. And note that we do not know whether the point A is on L. And this is side L in red. If we did, we would know immediately that AB equals AC since all points on perpendicular bisector are equidistant from B and C. We need to show that A is on L or equivalent, that the reflection across L takes A to itself. All right. So we're going to let RL be the transformation that reflects triangle ABC across L. All right, so we're gonna reflect triangle ABC across L. So it's just gonna be a flip-flop. C is gonna end up at B, B is gonna end up at C, and A stays where it is. That's what we're hoping for. Since L is the perpendicular bisector, a reflection across L of B will equal C, and a reflection across L of C would equal B. We do not know whether the transformation takes A for now. Let us say that the reflection of across L of A is equal to A prime. So we'll call that A prime for now. Okay, now since angle CBA is congruent to angle BCA, so CBA is congruent to BCA, which was given, and rigid motions preserve angle measures after applying a reflection across L to angle BCA, we get that angle CBA is congruent to angle CBA prime. Angle CBA and angle CBA prime share a ray BC. 
are of equal measure and A and A prime are both in the same half plane with respect to line BC. Hence, ray BA, BA, and BA prime are the same ray. In particular, A prime is a point somewhere on ray BA. Okay, let that sink in a minute, think about that. Okay, likewise, applying a reflection across L to angle CBA gives angle BCA, and that's congruent to angle BCA prime. And for the same reasons in the previous paragraph, A prime must also be a point somewhere on ray CA. Therefore, A prime is common to both ray BA and ray CA. Okay, the only point common to both ray BA and ray CA is point A, thus A and A prime must be the same point, i.e. A equals A prime. Okay, so now we can finally say, hence the reflection takes A to A, which means A is on the line L and a reflection across L of BA equals CA prime, which equals CA or BA equals CA. Hmm. Okay, and now on to number five, and it says given triangle ABC, okay, triangle ABC, the whole thing, with XY is the angle bisector of angle BYA. So here's angle BYA, XY bisects it, so that means that these two pieces must be congruent. And BC is parallel to XY. So BC is parallel to XY. Prove YB, YB right here equals YC. So we're trying to prove that this side is congruent to this side. All right, so the first thing we always do is write the givens. So we're going to say BC is parallel to XY. Reason given. Okay, so they're parallel. The measure of angle XYB therefore will now be congruent to the measure of um, CBY. This angle is going to be congruent to this angle because, now this might be hard to see, so let's do this, let's take a moment. Let's draw the two perpendiculars, or let's extend these out. We're looking at these two sides being parallel. Okay, come on. And we have a transversal right here. So that, those are alternate interior angles. Hopefully you can see that now. All right, so let's get rid of those. Get rid of this and get rid of that. Whoops, do not get rid of that. Get rid of that. All right, so hopefully you can see that. So what we're going to say now is the measure of angle X, Y, B. Equals the measure of angle CBY. Okay, and the reason is when two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the alternate interior angles are congruent or equal. Okay. All right, so next thing we're going to do is say the measure of angle XYA. equals the measure angle x, y, a is right here. That is going to be equal to the measure angle b, c, y. So we're saying x, y, a, this angle is congruent to this angle. Those are two parallel lines cut by a transversal, which would be the AC transversal in this case. 
So let me show that. Let me grab the right tool. All right, so there's our transversal. If I move it up onto the triangle and these are our two parallel lines coming down. So this is the transversal here. So those are corresponding angles right there. Okay, so the reason here is When two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the corresponding angles are equal or congruent. Okay, so now I can say, let's see, I haven't used blue. Now we're going to say the measure of angle X, Y, A equals the measure of angle X, Y, B. Okay, so where's that coming from? Well, X, Y, A equals B, C, Y. Okay. And X, Y, B equals C, B, Y. So X, Y, A equals, where's X, Y, A? X, Y, A is right here. X, Y, B is right here. And that's the definition of an angle bisector. Okay, so I'm not pulling this out of thin air. Look right up here. XY is an angle bisector. XY is bisecting AYB. So now I can say XYA equals XYB because of the bisector, okay? And then finally, let's switch colors again. How about black this time? And let's see, so where are we? Measure angle CBY. This one here, the measure of angle CBY equals the measure of angle BCY. How does CBY equal BCY? Well, XYA equals XYB. So BCY equals A, CBY equals B, and A and B are equal, so they have to be equal. So that's the substitution property of equality. Okay, now we have enough information to simply say, um, what we're trying to prove. Y, B equals Y, C. So what we just said before was angle C, B, Y equals B, C, Y. So now these two angles are congruent. So really what I can do is I can put two marks here because that's congruent to that. And that's congruent to that. So then I can just simply erase this because they're all congruent. All, those, all four of those angles are congruent. Reason for this one is when base angles of a triangle are equal in measure, the triangle is isosceles. So with an isosceles triangle, opposite sides are congruent. So YB is congruent to YC or equal to YC because these base angles are congruent. Okay, page five brings us to the end of lesson 23. Go to your problem set.